In this video, we're gonna be working on this Dodge Ram 1500 SST edition with the third gen Hemi swap. So if you guys have been following along, we've got this 97 Dodge Ram behind us. We've done a lot to get to this point. We've got the third gen Hemi in here running the Holly Terminator X Max. And she's running, it's actually driving, it moves back and forth, but we're waiting on a few parts. But uh, some of those parts might arrive during this episode, but if not, either way, we still have a lot to do. So right now, running, driving, we've got our cooling system in. We do have the three-speed 727 transmission in this. It's a built transmission, but everything is kind of looking like we might be going towards a eight-speed swap. So we've got some stuff. We've got a leaking brake booster. We're gonna swap that out. Um, on the last video, you guys saw that we had it running and moving, but uh, the brakes were really iffy. And we had a really big vacuum leak from the brake booster, which we illustrated in the last video. So we're gonna swap that out, get the new one in there, fix that, and we got a lot of other stuff. We also gotta figure out what we're gonna do with the dash on this thing and a bunch of other stuff. And we also picked up a axle so we've got a rear axle over here as well so let's get straight into everything all right there's a new brake booster let's get her in all right old one's out let's put the new one in So I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with this dash. So it is just so crumbly. But the problem is like you can buy this part and you can buy this part, the one that goes around the gauges and the vents and your stereo and stuff. But this I have not seen for sale. And this I'm going to have to recreate some of these pieces because like that is still attached to my cup holder right there. So that supposed to be in there so there's pieces that are broken out of this but the problem is even if you mend them back together I plastic weld them or whatever I do the rest of the thing is still brittle so I'm trying to figure out what I want to do here boys it's becoming a bit of a pain in the butt but anyways I'm gonna pop off this door panel and see what's going on with the window since the window popped off the uh, regulator so let's get this off as well Okay, so I obviously got the door panel off and it came off in one piece, which was nice. But again, this truck, these second gens is full. It's just everything plastic is just almost garbage at this point. So you can see like this truck, as I've mentioned a bunch of times now on this channel, this truck only has 21,000 miles on it. Like this regulator, like the track is mint. But the reason why it popped off is the little plastic bushings, the little rollers literally just disintegrated so it fell off of the balls right there so those little right there those little balls right here it just came completely off the track so i don't know if you can buy just these bushings you're able to slide them out of the end of the track so technically they could be replaceable but that's the problem so i gotta see if i can or can't find a couple of those guys so either that or i gotta get a new window regulator but seems silly to change the whole regulator just for these stupid little bushings but that's the issue there and uh yeah just one more thing to add to the list boys all right so if you guys watch my vlog you'll see that we picked up a third gen rear axle i got this for a smoking deal got it for 100 bucks not only with the rear calipers but also the front calipers so it came with the rotors probably have to do a brake job on it but it at least has rotors and all that stuff on it so i don't know what ratio it is I tried calculating it. I think this is a one wheel peel, but I tried to do rotations on it. And because the spider years are kind of working, I think it's skewing my results because I'm getting like one turn out of the wheel and one and three quarter turns out of the drive shaft, which doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm just gonna pull the cover, see what's inside it, and we'll go from there. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see right there. I don't know if you guys can see, but it is a 355. No limited slip in it by the looks of it. I don't see any clutch packs or anything. Just just got straight up spider gears on it, so it's a one wheel peel. But 
355 gears, uh, if we go eight speed, that's uh, that's not gonna be a bad ratio for us. It'll be a pretty decent amount of gear. This one over here has 392s in it, but I have a feeling somebody welded that diff. We'll have to find out when we pop that cover. If it does have a carrier in it with a limited slip, then we can put it in here, but I'm leaning towards that thing being welded. So if it's welded, I'm not gonna put it in here. We'll just run the 355 gear set for a bit. And then we'll end up putting a locker in it eventually if we need it. But uh, 355, eight speed will be uh, perfectly good. So I might as well drain the oil out of it since uh, we're gonna have the cover off and I don't feel like resealing the cover right now. Plus we're gonna end up welding in it. And actually the oil isn't terrible. Um, it's actually fairly golden. So another good sign there. So I'll let this drain out overnight because uh, we're not in a hurry, but got this thing propped up and tilted back. And what I also need to do is uh, grind these off. So what I'll probably do is I'm gonna put this up, double check everything with the axle on this thing, and then uh, we can figure out where we're gonna have to relocate these brackets to do our axle flip and so that it fits in the second gen. So it's actually a few days later. We have been kind of jumping around on a bunch of different projects because waiting on parts, working on things, all that sort of stuff. And if you guys do or don't know, we've got Hellcat Swap Ram. Also the Hellcat Swap Dakota, you'll notice things have kind of shuffled around because I've got more parts and more things I want to do to both of them. So if you guys are uh, here for those vehicles, let me know if you're here for the Hellcat Ram or if you're here for the Hellcat Dakota, if you want to see work and uh, stuff going on with either one of those trucks. But what I want to do next is a few things. We did order a different alternator. So we have a Holly alternator coming that's just a one wire alternator. So all it needs is a switched power source to tell it to kick on and then it does the rest. Whereas these ones are a smart alternator and they need a pulsed connection. So PWM connection to tell it when to charge. So it's a little more advanced. If you guys are watching on the last videos, we messed with relays and all sorts of stuff to get it to work. We tried a solid state relay from Hella. Uh, it was causing a bunch of issues. We went back to a traditional one and it kind of works enough to where it's at least holding voltage, but still not ideal. So what I actually have is I have a NOS relay, which is a solid state relay. No, we're not putting nitrous on this, at least not at this point, but we're using one of their high quality relays to try and drive this so even though the other alternator is coming i still want to know if this theory will work if we can get the holly to control a mopar alternator with a nos relay then uh, at least it'll be a good reference for you it'll be a good reference for me and anybody else that wants to tackle this they can know that they don't have to necessarily purchase another alternator they can just get a solid state relay from nos and make it all work so i just want to test it at least it'll uh, keep the battery charging while we're moving around so it's only a couple wires. We've got three wires here. The NOS relay is three wires as well. So I'm just gonna temporarily connect it, and see what we get. Okay, so as mentioned, solid state relay kit from NOS. I wasn't making that up. And this is a beefy unit, you guys. So you'll notice here, we've got three wires. So pretty much your input, your output, and then the small skinny wire is gonna be our trigger wire. And here is the solid state relay. So I'm not gonna go too crazy with uh, trying to get too official with everything just at the moment. I uh, pretty much am just gonna strip the ends, put some alligator clips on it, cause uh, that's all we need for our testing purposes. So let me get that rigged up on the vehicle and then uh, we'll see what we got. Okay, so I've got it working. And again, it's just very primitive wiring. We didn't uh, do anything permanent, but I've got our nitrous solenoid here. It comes in on our wire, goes out on the blue. And then this is our input wire right here. So it's the third small wire going into the nitrous solenoid. Here's what we've got here coming out of the battery. So 12.52. When I tested an actual Ram truck, just a bone stock one, my buddy Dennis's, you'll notice right here coming out, we've got like half of a volt. You probably have to see about three or four volts going to the wire on the alternator. So if we want to play with this, if we adjust it to see about three or four volts, then three or four volts going to the alternator should give us a little bit more juice, but at least right now it's maintaining 12 and a half volts. Probably would want to see that, you know, 13 and a half or so, but if we want to turn it up, we could, but since the other alternator is coming, uh, it's kind of a bit of a waste for us to uh, really dial it in. But the nice thing is with the Holly, they give you all sorts of settings so you can play with that, adjust it as you please. Okay, so one of the other issues you guys is I pretty much 
need to find a dash at this point. I know some guys are saying to fourth gen dash swap it, do all that, but I don't think you guys realize how much work that actually is. Having to completely reconfigure all the HVAC and all these hoses and where they all go and have to custom do all that, it would just be a huge task, which one, we don't have the time for because we have to finish this and the Jeep before Mo Party and LS Fest, which is only in two and a half months or so. The other thing is I wanna keep this thing kind of like a resto mod in the sense of having the original interior and everything but then just having a modern drivetrain i really don't want to i really don't want to do the whole dash swap thing but this thing is so brittle you guys like this is cracked the other day i literally leaned on it right there and my whole fist went right through it i didn't even like hit it or nothing i just literally i was underneath the dash uh i was trying to take out the bulb for the glove box actually because the glove box light was on since the glove box is out i was running the battery down literally put my hand there to lean on it and my hand went right through it so you can see everywhere is just disintegrated so i can't even order just the top of the dash because the rest of the dash is absolutely just brittle so if you guys happen to know i don't even care what color it is at this point but if you know somewhere that has one of these dashes or you can get one to me i'm in tampa florida so if you guys uh can get me a line on one i'm trying to see if i can find one so that we can just keep motoring along with the more important parts of the project and not trying to glue a dash back together so if you guys have one or know where to get one locally or you can get one to me hit me up somehow some way whether it's facebook instagram email you guys know how to get a hold of me so that's that one of the other things too is you guys remember we tried these wheels i got these from autozone they did not work so but what i did do is i went on ebay i think i was telling you guys and there was a company on ebay that sells them specifically for this application so these are the right diameter right here so let's go ahead and give these a try i know it's not a big task but um, if you guys have an issue like this where your regulator is good but it's just the bushings the rollers on there there's a guy that sells them there was 20 bucks like the guy's making a killing for sure this probably cost him like 50 cents but just for the sake of whoever it was that did all the research and uh, figuring out the right size one, 10 bucks each, 20 bucks, it gets my window back working. I'm only guessing that when I start using that one a little bit more, it's gonna break the other side, so I'll be out another 20 bucks for that side. But essentially what we're gonna do, I think I'm gonna put the window down and then there's two uh, posts that we'll have to knock off. And then uh, once we take those out, so I'll probably grind those off, then we can put these screws through and then hopefully put it back on the track. So let's uh, get that done. All right, so another little thing out of the way. There we go. We've got a working window again. So that's fixed. So pretty happy with that. I know uh, somebody's making some money off those wheels, but uh, it definitely saved me a lot of time trying to find the correct size wheel running back and forth to the store. So um, shout out to that person for uh, just taking care of business. So anyways, that's done. What I wanna do next is I want to roll this forward, put it on the lift and start figuring out this rear axle situation. So I want to be able to get under there, measure that against this one, see where the different uh, perches are gonna be. And then uh, once I kind of have my measurements, then we can go ahead, grind those off and uh, start getting to fabricating. Okay, so we've got the truck up in the air and we are gonna go over the axle swap stuff. So just took a few quick measurements. All right, so it's the next day for me, same video. I'm gonna go ahead, take the wheels off and we'll start unbuttoning everything. So we'll take the wheels off, we'll put this thing back up in the air, start disconnecting this axle. Also, I wanna pop the diff cover. I think I've mentioned to you guys a few times if you've been following the series, this might be a welded diff because there is no slip between these two wheels. I don't know if you can see the other wheel spinning, but they are turning 100% locked with each other. So we'll see if uh, maybe we have a spool, uh, maybe somebody welded it. I have no idea what's in there, but we'll pop the cover at least and uh, see what we've got in there. It is a 392, the other one's a 355. If uh, the stuff that's in this one looks decent and uh, depending on what's in it, we might pull the guts out of this and put it in the other one, but we'll uh, assess all that once we figure out what we've got. So pop the wheels, put it up, start disconnecting stuff, and then we can drop this axle. Okay, so we're well underway. I had to beat the heck out of those drums to get those off. Those things were on there for a million years, but funny enough, uh, everything in here is like brand new. Again, the truck only has 21K on it, so even the uh, shoes are in decent shape. 
I'm not sure. I'll have to do some research, but it's not critical at this point. I was uh, wondering if the parking brake cable from these ones, from the drum version, will fit onto our caliper ones. So I don't know if this cable will work, if we can take this out of here and use it on the other one, but I at least wanted to uh, get the drums off so that uh, if that is an option for us, I can at least get to it because it's easier to get them off while it was still fixed to the vehicle. So parking brake cables are both disconnected. They're just both chilling right here. So that's disconnected. I took off our sensor from the pumpkin. So there's a little speedo sensor there. And then I have to disconnect our brake line. The vent is just chilling right here. And our two shocks, as you can see, are disconnected as well. So pretty much I'm gonna disconnect the brake line and then we can take that down. But uh, I think what I am going to do also right now is like I mentioned, we'll pop the cover, see what the heck is in this thing. Okay, so I've got the brake lines draining here. I just popped the one off the little cylinder there and let's go ahead and pop this cover. has an upgraded clutch pack or something in it because I see the clutch pack in there but she looks pretty good in here. So of course 392s. Alright so gears are in excellent shape you guys. Everything looks really good in here. Um, it does actually have a date stamp on this so I mean it could just be the standard limited slip but it's got all the clutch packs on the side there. There is a date stamp on it 96 right here and the truck was built in 97 so this very well could be all the original stuff here so yeah everything looks pretty decent so probably end up uh saving this for when we get a little bit more time we'll throw this into this carrier the 392 into that axle but for now we'll get that axle in here and uh, just get it running and working so let's go ahead we're gonna drop the axle i should have this thing balanced pretty decently but um, you can see I have a safety stand in the front, but what I'm going to try to do is put it onto hopefully that table or maybe actually I'll probably get the meth cart. The meth cart would probably be a better idea right now. So probably get that. This thing is still dripping. Our brake line. So I'll probably get that and then uh, I'll lower it onto that and then cart this away. When we put in the other one, since we're doing axle flip, I'm going to have to put it on the top there. So. Um, I'll see if maybe I can get lucky and if I can sneak it in those uh, Brake backings are pretty big. I don't know Maybe I'll see if I just take off one of them and slip it over the top We'll see or drop the leaf to uh, throw it through. We'll see what happens here. Okay, here we go We got the meth card out then I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the bolts and then we can lift the body back off Don't worry I've offset of things plus we have a engine block in the back end so I made sure that we uh, didn't have this thing front end heavy because that's one of the big no-no's with <laughs> using a two post lift so let me zip those off and we'll get that axle out Okay, so we got a lot of work to do, so let's get straight into it. So I just double checked. I wanted to make sure that our 17 inch SST edition wheels would fit and they do everything clear. So we're good there. So we can still rock the same original wheels. What I was trying to figure out is should I take off the backing plates and get in all that, but that sounds like a lot of work. So what I'm actually going to do is this leaf spring and the way these are, you can't just drop it and you know, you can't take this off and just drop the whole leaf spring from the back. So, and then this one, we've got the gas tank in the way, so that's a bit of a pain in the butt. So what I'm gonna do actually is right here, I'm gonna take this one out of the front, swing it out of the way, then I'm gonna come in here like this, and I'm gonna try to put the axle in and uh, get that backing plate over top of that spring. And then this one I can just swing up and then we'll bring this spring back underneath it. So that's uh, my game plan. Other thing I gotta do is I gotta zip these off and flip the actual bolt. So right here, we gotta flip this so that this little stud is on the top. So let me get that done um, and then we'll move on.
All right, so the rear axle is in, you guys. A couple things, I need to get some lug nuts so I can actually put the wheels on to put it down, so can't really show you guys the ride height. Other things, a lot of other things, actually. I have a guy right now that's coming to look at the 727, so I put the 727, ooh, that's a lot of cobwebs. I put the 727 up for sale because we are going eight speed, boys. It pretty much is uh, a given right now that we're going eight speed. I've got the stuff, I've got the uh, standalone controller for the eight speed as well. So got a lot of stuff though. And I wanna get this video out for you guys because I probably tomorrow, I gotta go get some more parts for the rear axle swap. So I'm missing a couple bolts that hold the caliper. Well, actually a bunch of bolts that hold the calipers together. So I gotta get those. I'm missing a brake line that goes here to our driver side caliper. And then I could start putting everything together and bleeding it and uh, getting all that good to go. Also, I need uh, lug nuts because these are a bigger size. So this thing should be sitting uh, fairly good though. And you guys gotta remember, we do have the lowering shackles in the back here. So I don't know, we might kind of ease up on these a little bit or I might even go with stock ones or We'll see what happens with that. I don't know how low this thing is gonna be sitting with the axle flip, because you can pretty much see how much we lowered it. So she should be sitting a lot lower, so we'll figure that out once uh, we get it sitting on the ground. But tomorrow, I'm gonna head over to the junkyard and get some of the parts so I can finish the rear axle swap. Also, I wanna keep out, and you guys can help me with this too. I'm trying to find a dash, not the top, not the part that goes around the gauge cluster and the stereo and the climate controls, but the actual structure of the dash. Mine is absolutely disintegrated, so I need to find one. I don't care what color it is at this point, I'll just paint it the tan color that we need it to be, but I need to find the main structure so that I can start putting things on the dash. Part of the issue I'm running into right now is I can't finalize interior stuff when the actual structure of the dash is just gone. I've seen some comments, some of you guys were saying about you know dash swapping it because I do have a fourth gen dash up there, but that would just open up a huge can of worms, you guys. It would be a lot of work. And it's really not the direction we're trying to go with this truck. We're trying to do more resto mod type stuff where it's got the newer drivetrain, but it still looks and has that classic truck feel to it. We're not doing like complete dash swap like this one. It's kind of just a different uh, goal on this truck. Plus we got to get this truck running because we still have the LS over here and we still have our Jeep Comanche in the trailer that we have to even start on to get for LS Fest, which is only a couple months away now. So we got a lot of work to do boys. But if you guys are enjoying these videos, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody that you think will enjoy these videos. Giving a thumbs up is free. It helps support the channel. If you guys are new to the channel, go check out the other videos on here. We've got a lot of stuff already on this truck, as well as the Hellcat Swap Dakota, Hellcat Swap Ram. So check it out. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. We'll see you guys on the next one.